The number of gurus out there that keep talking about autophagy, you'd think that this would have been mentioned before, but... So, let's tackle it. Does being overweight, obese even, increase autophagy? Spoiler, the answer is yes. But the more intriguing question is, why? And, I'll mention this now, there's a twist to this story. Let's find out. Now, I'm not going to go through all the intricacies of autophagy because it involves several steps with many, many steps, but I'd like to focus our attention on three major players, and by players, I mean proteins within your cells. ATG5, ATG7, and LC3. No, I didn't have a stroke. That's their names. You know, autophagy doesn't pop up out of nowhere. It has to be in somewhere. It begins in your endoplasmic reticulum, an organelle within your cells. When triggered by upstream signaling proteins, you may be familiar with the protein called AMPK, the endoplasmic reticulum undergoes an initiation stage where a section of the endoplasmic reticulum's membrane pinches off of the organelle. This membrane is called the phagophore and is an immature autophagy machinery. The maturation process requires ATG7 and LC3, two of the proteins that I mentioned just a bit ago. LC3 comes in two major forms, LC31 and LC32. LC31 is free-floating and not associated with the phagophore, but once ATG7 facilitates the addition of a lipid molecule, a fat molecule, to the LC31, it becomes LC32. As LC32, this protein accumulates on the phagophore, which is a critical step of autophagy maturation. Now, the phagophore, usually upgraded to autophagosome, can latch onto components within the cell and trap them inside the membrane. However, it does not have the capacity to destroy those components, so it needs to bind and fuse with another vessel called the lysosome, which contains all of the destructive enzymes and acidity needed. This is where ATG5 plays a role because it is also bound to the autophagosome membrane on the outside and allows the lysosome to then bind to the autophagosome and fuse with it, thereby merging the two parts into what is called the destructive autolysosome. And voila, this is the autophagy system. Extremely simplified. And you're only using three key proteins that actually do more than just what I've outlined. But... We'll just highlight those three for the reasons that you'll understand shortly. Okay, so you understand how autophagy works, and you've likely been told that autophagy cleanses the cell by eliminating different dysfunctional or unwanted sections of the cell. That's all true, but you've probably also been told that the maximum autophagy can be reached through fasting. So, would it shock you if I were to tell you there's an increased autophagy from overeating? Well... There isn't just one study on the matter, there are actually multiple. For example, these two that have these amazingly contrasty immunofluorescence images. Essentially, the researchers are tagging this LC3 protein that we've discussed earlier in red. The blue is the marker of DNA. Now, the more red that you see, the more of this autophagy marker, the LC3, is present. If we compare the lean individuals, the fat mass versus overweight, I don't think that I need to narrate this. The contrast, as I mentioned, is dramatic. But we can also look at other proteins like ATG5. In this data, the black bar is the fat tissue of obese individuals, and we again see this increased LC3, as well as increased ATG5. And you might have noticed that the LC3 is the mature form, the LC3-2. Yet, it turns out that the effect is even stronger in the fat tissue of diabetic individuals. It depends on the fat tissue probed, but when looking at subcutaneous fat, which is the fat directly under your skin, the effect is more pronounced. The T2D is the diabetic condition, the OB is the obesity without diabetes, and the NO are the fat tissues from the leaner individuals. Okay, so why might this be occurring? Well, autophagy can be used to kill cells through a number of mechanisms. So it is possible that autophagy is being upregulated because the cells are essentially doing themselves in. For that, we can turn our attention to cell death measures, which are quantified by a protein measure of caspase. Now, caspase is a protein that belongs in a traditional signaling of cell death. 
Meaning if caspase is cleaved or processed, then it becomes active. And when active, it will activate caspase activated DNases, which are proteins that insert themselves into the nucleus of our cells and essentially slaughter the entire genome within. So they cut up all, the, all of our genes and cause mass damage that then kills the cell. So here's the data on those caspases. You'll notice the relative consistency of upregulated caspase presence in the obese and diabetes conditions. If you're a molecular biologist, you might actually get a kick out of these images. They're pretty bad, aren't they? Anyway, our main focus is on the bar graphs. And we saw that the fat cells experience increased caspase, but here's the kicker. The researchers don't show the cleaved caspase levels. They're only showing the uncleaved version, which is the inactive version. So why did they do that? Because they report there were no changes in cleave caspase. Now, admittedly, it would still have been good to actually show the data, but if we are to believe them, caspase cleavage did not occur. Additionally, mitochondria are not dysfunctional and the cells, other cell death responses are not activated. So what's going on here? Well, before we get to answering that, Allow me to mention that there's an extended version of this video that discusses how insulin resistance affects this whole phenomenon, as well as how it might affect inflammation. For that, you'll need to be a Physionic Insider. I'll have that linked in the description for you. But what's going on with these caspases and the lack of cell death? I'm not going to sit here and convince you that I know the answer for certain, but what I can offer you is a few possibilities based on the information from this scientific review. Here in the researchers point out a few possibilities. Clearly, we're not seeing cell death of by autophagy. So they mentioned that there is evidence that autophagy can be used, or at least earlier versions of the autophagy machinery that include the autophagosomes that we described earlier for moving large chunks of the cell around. What? <laughs> Your cell has different components within it, with an open fluid section that's not occupied by the nucleus and the mitochondria and all those organelles called the cytosol. Within the cytosol, there are millions of proteins that interact and fulfill enzymatic reactions, keeping the cell operational. Well, the autophagosome is thought to scoop up large amounts of these proteins and instead of binding to lysosomes for destruction, it simply escorts them to the inner borders of the cell. A little bit like a, a whale sucking up krill, but instead of eating them, it would then spit them back out at another area of the ocean. Okay, so you're likely wondering, why would it do that? The answer is to clear space for a process known as adipogenesis, the formation of new fat cells. Cells, when they divide, create copies of many of its components and also purposefully separate components to either extreme of the cell the left and the right of the cell, which then allows them to pinch off in the middle and generate a new cell from the mother cell. Autophagy may play a role in this process. And if you think that's incredibly cool as I do, then high five. Let's just pretend that we just high fived considering that I'm here and you're well over there. But <laughs> that's not the only explanation that's offered. Another one is related to inflammation. For example, they mentioned that autophagy can also be used to destroy key inflammatory proteins known as cytokines. Under inflammatory conditions, inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1 beta are produced by the cells and released into circulation. That attracts immune cells and generally enhances the local inflammatory profile. However, autophagy can curb this effect by enveloping these cytokines and destroying them through the typical pathway that we described earlier. It reduces the inflammatory burden. So exactly why autophagy is upregulated in fat tissue is unknown if it's a positive thing or a negative. But what I can tell you is that the coolest and most interesting explanation lies in this video, which explores this very topic from a new perspective. I'll speak with you there.